Good morning, traders. Welcome back to Commodities Update. And today we'll be updating you guys on natural gas, as well as UNG, oil, US dollar, gold, and silver. We're looking at their techno analysis levels, as well as support and resistance levels to potentially play off of and see if there's any pattern shaping up and going into next week. And feel free to like, share, and subscribe, guys. Or anything as well as you have to comment below if you guys have any questions or anything you guys like to look at all right let's get started so we're looking at natural gas futures and which dictates the price action on ung and we're looking at the unadjusted chart which um unadjust the gaps of the contracts and we're looking on the daily time frame so currently we are potentially shaping up a inverse head and shoulders maybe so this is the left shoulder this we need this to go up closer to here to form that head and then potentially you know we might reject from this 1.933 again which we already rejected here five times and another time here six and if we do reject from there again initially i want to see a shallow pullback closer to somewhere around this range to make that right shoulder and then retest and break above that that'll be a com confirmed inverse head and shoulders and breaking out of a strong uh, resistance. And that would means we will also have a daily uptrend as well. So in inverse head and shoulders psychology of it, it's just a downtrend into a uptrend. You can see this is the downtrend. And when this comes up and forms a pivot, meaning this pivot is a higher low, meaning higher than the prior low. And then we break above the prior highs pivot, making a higher high, that's a daily uptrend confirm. So that's just the psychology of inverse head and shoulders. We'll see if we even get that because right now the bare minimum, I talked about this on Thursday, bare minimum for bulls is to get above um, pretty much this blue line <clears throat> and this black line as well as um, this 12 EMA. And we did not get over that again. So I was talking about it on Thursday. Yeah, you can see that we pretty much rejected from 12 EMA, which is this teal looking line. <clears throat> An EMA just an exponential moving average. You get that in an indicator and type 12. You get the same line as me. And since you can see that, we pretty much close at the same spot as um, Thursday. And we're not over this blue line or the black line. Black line is just this resistant uh, prior support. He's acting as prior support all the way back um, to wherever. And we are just on it pretty much. You can see. And this blue line, just this sideways bounce that we've been chopping around in. So we need to get over pretty much bare minimum for bulls just to just to get above, you know, close at 1.78 or something. So I'll come back up here or, you know, and we need to break above this. Uh, if we do that, then we have another resistance right in our face, pretty much this one. You can see this falling wedge. Um, so zoom out a little bit to the bigger term. You can see rejection. Two rejections there, two rejections here, another two rejections here. So when we do come up, we're pretty close on Friday. Um, when we do come up here, it'll likely be another rejection. We could even say the Friday one is a potential rejection already. Because these lines, you don't have to be like exactly. Support resistance is a zone. Um, yeah, that means the, the buyers are weak. We could even get up, up to here to test it. and. We'll see, maybe Monday we'll test it. And if we do reject from there, maybe we'll come back. If we reject from there and get a heavy selling like this, then we're probably gonna come down to retest the bottom of the falling wedge again, which is the falling wedge support. You know, support, support, support. If we do come down, it's likely I get support. So yeah, big picture for now, we will be looking at this falling wedge um, and we'll see if it breaks out of that um, whenever, whenever it wants to, but as of now, it doesn't it's not showing any signs of that yet at least close above um at least close above EMA 12 and break above here and then we may get a chance of that inverse head and shoulders if we don't break it out of this falling wedge bull then we're probably coming back down to closer to retest the bottom of the falling wedge again um yeah also if we do break out of this falling wedge bull right on this bull side you can see and reject from there makes the left sorry make the right shoulder we could back test this falling wedge as support and bounce off of it that would be the perfect setup but uh, we we don't always get perfect setups 
So you can see uh, breakable out of this falling wedge, resistance. It's this uh, 1.933 resistance. Back tests this falling wedge uh, resistance as now becoming support. Bounce off of it, break above that. That would be the, like the absolute perfect TA right there if it does happen. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see next week if it does happen like that. Uh, if not, then the bearish scenario would be reject from the falling wedge and retest the bottom of this falling wedge support. All right, let's take a look at UND. So UND is similar right idea. Oops, pull that back. Um, yeah, <clears throat> so UNG, same thing. It follows the natural gas. Um, pretty much eight hour is the EMA 12 that we want to get over for UNG. Um, and natural gas is the daily. So if, if natural gas gets over its daily EMA 12, UNG will also get over its daily EMA 12. I'm uh, sorry, eight hour EMA 12 that we've been rejecting from uh, for the last one, two, three, four, five, six times. And you can see it was very clear. Um, when we're rejecting from here as well here and we slightly got over it but we came back right below it here another rejection here another rejection here another rejection here. It's a little bit choppy here so not as useful here but um just a general guide that we showing um and we want to see at least get over the ema to just show some kind of buyers are interested in um not like a definite number that we get over it and it's gonna rock it or something bare minimum to see some buyers giving some momentum on the upside, just like over here, you know, um, back here when we're rejecting from that AR EMA 12, super clear, rejection, 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 rejection. First time getting over it, now we can see some buyers coming back, momentum going. So I want to see something like that um, for, <clears throat> for uh, more momentum. As of now, it's pretty much in a chop zone. Let's see if we get that inverse head and shoulders. And if you guys want to um, support the channel, feel free to click the Patreon link below. And it's a free channel and there's a free Discord link as well. Come chat, hang out, um, talk about stocks or anything you like, as well as um, if you guys are looking for one-on-one -on -one coachings where we'll guide you through how to um, set up your trading plan, how to um, get your sticking points resolved, your uh, mental part of the trading game is pretty much 80% of trading. Or if you're, you know, want to improve your TA, get it um, up to an A game level, check out the um, Patreon link. I'm taking five people um, as limit because it's, um, it's a lot to teach when you have um, a lot of time in there. So check it out and let's keep going. So let's look at the oil. Oil is currently making that big enough drop where I talked about if we continue to drop, it's gonna favor the bears now on the next bounce, especially if we get a weak bounce. Currently, it's forming a daily bear flag. You can see right here, um, as long as we don't bounce above 0 0.382. So even if we get a weak bounce on Monday, comes up and then rejects from that EMA 12, and then we just kind of like chop around, that's a bear flag forming. And if we break the low of this Thursday's candle, it's a confirmed bear flag. Yeah, as of now, um, bears are in control because you can see we slightly poked above Thursday's high and then no follow through there actually. Thursday's high is 79.49 and yeah, we got above it by like four cents. So we'll call it a double top and or a break above zero follow through pretty much. We actually closed um, to the low of his day actually. So there may be more downside coming. And if we continue to drop, maybe we'll form that big head and shoulders. It'll be the opposite of the inverse one. This is a bearish pattern. If we break below the neckline, then we will drop. It'll be an uptrend into a downtrend. Versus the inverse head and shoulders on natural gas, it's a downtrend into an uptrend. This will be a uptrend into a downtrend. So yeah, so bears already created enough room now for that um, potential trend change. All right, even let's see on hourly, is anything? Yeah. Nothing really on the hourly. Really was more clear. All right, let's take a US dollar. US dollar bull flagging here. Um, still pretty much the opposite of oil. Let's see. Bounce. Now just kind of flagging. As long as the flag is above 0 0.382, we have a chance to test this high, which is the uh, render 106.9, 107 zone. 
<clears throat> top of the tie. And if that both leg breaks down, you know, we chop around and then it goes like that. Then we're coming back to test this uh, 104.9, which is, just call it 105, pretty much the top of this range right here. We act as support. And if we flush through that and then it goes lower, then we're also forming a head and shoulders here. But as of now, it's way too early. This is still a both leg. We haven't even dropped yet. If we start dropping, then we can start talking about it potentially. But right now, it's it's a both leg. But just keep it in the back of your mind. Um, uh, macro news going on so affecting the dollar a lot but uh, yeah these are the levels keys levels to see all right we get gold okay so upper wick two upper wicks here in closer to the upper range of um, this zone so we know that that there is resistance, resistance there around this um four one eight two four just call it two four range 2400 range and we have not closed above this um, level yet. Let's see where we close. Close at 2391. So actually, we haven't closed above 2400 as of all these candles. We have gone above it, but not closed above it. So we know now there's some little bit of sellers up here. But the chart still has no reflex at the moment. No, no trend changes on the downside. No, um, yeah, even on the short term time frame. Let's see, hourly, yeah, no trend change on the hourly. If we do get break below Friday's low, then we may have an hourly downtrend confirmed. But as of now, no signs of that yet. You can see we had one here hourly downtrend confirmed, zero follow through. This wick, and we pop back up. There's absolute zero follow through there. Maybe if we get another one down here, then we can start to say, okay, maybe it's starting to shift a little bit to the bear side. Bear, bear minimum for bears, you get the hourly downturn. That's like the bare minimum to start even anything. Um, but as of now, we don't even have that. So we can't say anything on this chart is bearish or bullish. Um, bulls literally just pop like, let's see, 21% and we're consolidating at the high of the range. So that's a very good sign. As long as we continue to go sideways, bulls are absolutely happy. Um, I feel like at this moment, you know, if we get a big drop, then then we can start to say, okay, bears maybe could potentially change trends once we get a shallow bounce going. Sometimes we get a big drop and then we just V-shape, right? And that's nothing. So that's why trend changes are so important. We get a big drop and then a weak bounce, then we get, we can get a daily downtrend on these trend changes to affirm the either the buyers or the sellers uh, for the trend. Pretty much just saying something like this: Okay, buyers are coming and then coming in, going um, strong, and then we pull back. We want to see are the buyers serious about taking this higher or not. If they're not, we could just come all the way back. That's why trend changes are important, and essentially they are. Look how shallow this retracement was, barely any retracement, and then we just go boom, even higher. Let's take a look at silver. Silver outperforming gold, and we're just chopping around this sideways range, perfect for the bulls. Consolidate sideways, um, let things cool off, the RSI and everything indicators cool off a little bit after such a huge run, and if we can consolidate long enough, then it's easier for the um, bulls to take another leg up. This could also be a distribution zone where shop sideways around um, for big money to distribute and get out of their position and then you can then no roll over. So just keep on watch of the sideways zone. Same thing with gold is forming its sideways zone. And uh, if it breaks bare on that side, then we know that this was a, was a distribution zone. So yeah, keep an eye out for the consolidation zone at this moment. First, metals are very geopolitical, so we'll have, you know, whichever news will really affect silver and gold. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of you guys' weekend and um, set your stop losses. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below as well as to check out the Patreon link or support the channel. And yeah, enjoy the sun. Take care.